as most of you know, I have a very serious liking to James Prochet. Wide well, receiver for the Baltimore Ravens from SMU. And really the, the thumbnail says what happened to James, Pro, James Prochet. And I really want to know. I'm really interested into how he went from the, the guy he was in college to a guy that pretty much has just as many penalties as he has catches in his third year in the NFL. But before we do that, let's start off by taking you back to James Prochet at SMU. As a college freshman, you know, straight out of high school, he redshirted, didn't play. But here are his numbers going forward. He played the next four years as a freshman. 57 carries, 500, not carries, catches, 509 yards. Sophomore year, 40 carries, 806 yards. As a junior, really blew up as a junior. 93 catches, 1,199 yards, almost 1,200 yards. Then his senior season, in which he led the nation in catches, not the uh, American Conference, the NCAA in catches, with 111 for 1,225 yards. Where'd that guy go? I mean, at, at that age, you don't forget how to catch. You don't forget how to run routes. You only get better. So I think. But now he gets drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, and he comes in with Devin DuVernay, he and Devin DuVernay have the highest catch percentage in college. So you think, you know, you're you're, you're drafting two sure-handed, two proven guys that can at least catch the ball. They may not give you a lot as far as size and, and 50-50, you know, ball getting, but at least when the ball gets to them, they catch it. Let's talk about his, his stint with the Ravens. And I say stint even though he's still there. His rookie year, he only had three targets. All three targets came on the same play. It was an empty set. He had one catch, one incompletion, and the second time he ran it versus Pittsburgh, because he ran it one time versus Pittsburgh, they came out in that same set with him on the field, and the second time it was a pick six. So he only had three targets that, that rookie year. One catch for 14 yards. Sophomore year, he jumps out, and he, you know, he had some decent years. He had um, sixteen catches for, uh, on twenty targets. Uh, last game was at his best game was at Denver. I'm not Denver at Cincinnati with the third string quarterback. Seven catches for seventy six yards. Had a good game versus Denver early in the year with five catches for seventy four yards. But following his best game as a Baltimore Raven, he was inactive for the next two weeks. The next two weeks now. Pat Ricard came back. James Prochet was inactive, a healthy scratch for the next two weeks. After just posting his best game. Crazy to think about. But it gave you or gave me a false sense of, and maybe not even a false sense. It gave me a sense of hope of what Prochet could be. 80% catch percentage. And we're you're thinking Lamar's going to be back and we're going to open up the offense a little more. So that let me think, OK, the more snaps he get, the better he'll play, because that's what the data had told me up until this point. Fast forward to this year. James Prochet has eight catches, 17 targets, which is a 47 percent catch rate, almost double of half of what he had the year before. He had 80 percent the year before, went down to 47. I don't know what's the he couldn't have his catch percentage, so to speak. Eight catches, five accepted penalties. Five. Now, pro football focus, pro football reference only says, not focus, no, not PFF. We're going to do PFF. Pro football reference says he only had one drop. I think he has about three or four, but my standards are probably different from theirs. And he also had interception this year. So basically, he had more negative plays than catches. How do we come to that? Now, all this negative I've just spewed out, you know, about James Prochet, it's hard for me to do because if you've been rocking with the channel for a while, y'all know I love Prochet. I love the dude. I think he's a great teammate. Uh, I think he's a decent receiver. But for some strange reason, that has not has not been put what that has not been put out on film. And honestly, 
as bad as he's been, especially this year, as bad as he's been this year, I still think he's a guy that given a role similar to what Wes Welker, what um, Edelman did, if he can find a team that would put him in those positions, I think he can be all right. Because I think he's a heck of a runner in the slot. He, He runs great routes. He's quick in and out of his breaks. He just don't have no long speed. Can catch. Well, I thought he could catch. I still think he can catch. Forget that. I still think he can catch. It's just that he has to find the right system for him. And, you know, maybe he gets the opportunity this year if the Ravens get a new coordinator. But it don't look like he's going to be in the room. Because from what I'm getting or from what I'm feeling, that they're going to overhaul the, the whole room with the only holdover being Bateman and maybe Duvernay. But I honestly think if if they come back from camp and, you know, they got a different system and they bring in receivers, I think Prochet could probably beat out people and be the fourth or fifth guy. And which I don't mind being that, be him being that guy, especially if they put him in positions to work in the slot. But, you know, a lot of his penalties came from, from him blocking. And some of them I don't mind because it shows aggression. It just shows lack of technique. I liked his aggression. He just showed lack of technique. And and what I what I saw on tape was him realizing that he's not going to play much and him trying to make the most out of his snaps and being a little too overzealous, too overaggressive. And I understand that. But again, y'all know how much I like Prochet. And I just want to talk about his small body of work here in Baltimore. And um, we'll see what happens with my man three, man. We'll see. We'll see. I know a lot of y'all hate him. I don't hate him. I still think it's promised there, but I do realize that it potentially could be over for my guy, James Prochet. So I appreciate you guys for coming through, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. If this is your first time here, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos when they arise, hit the bell so you can be notified and subscribe. And uh, all the ways to join the Patreon and become a member are in the description. So if you want to do any of that, I would appreciate it. See y'all soon, man. Peace.